Well, good morning, Emmanuel Light of the World Church family, and welcome to our worship experience here at Emmanuel Light of the World. We are so grateful that each and every one of you has taken the opportunity to be a part of this great service. Whether you're in the building or you're watching online, we are so grateful that you chose Emmanuel Light of the World as your place of worship today. We hope that you guys will enjoy what the Lord is doing and take part of everything that he wants to deposit on the inside of you. I'm telling you, there's a word, there's a worship song, there's something in this service today that is gonna bless your life. Take it, grab hold of it, and come with expectation. If you're visiting with us for the very first time, we wanna say welcome, thank you for, wel for visiting with us. Thank you for being here today. And what we want you to do is go ahead and take out your cell phone and text the word WELCOME to the number 678-582-8266. That's 678-582-8266. That way we can connect with you, get you a part of our system, and you'll know all of the exciting things that we have going on here at Emmanuel Light of the World. And once again, we want to say on, my, on behalf of myself and Pastor Chuck, welcome to Emmanuel. Well, good morning, Emmanuel Light of the World. I am Pastor Rakia Wright, and I'm bringing you our news and events for the month of December. You guys, we have made it to the end of 2022, and we have done it with such consistency and discipline in the area of prayer with our 10 days of prayer. You guys, this is our last 10 days of prayer for this year, and we wanna finish strong. We're starting on December the 22nd with our 10 days of prayer at 815. You can catch us on our Zoom platform. We wanna finish the year strong. So we wanna make sure that everyone grabs the link and joins us on December the 22nd at 815 p.m. You guys, we have made it to the very end of the year and we have to close out this year Emmanuel style with our New Year's worship celebration on December the 31st at 9.30 p.m. So go ahead and mark your calendars, get your festive wear ready because we're going to cross over into 2023 together. That's December the 31st, our New Year's Eve service at 9.30 p.m in the sanctuary, hope to see you. This is also a friendly reminder that we will not be in the sanctuary on January 1st. All right, let me repeat that. We will not be in the sanctuary on January 1st, our New Year's Day. We will be um, going live on our YouTube channel at 10.30 a.m. So we want everyone to join in and to be a part of our virtual service on January 1st. We'll resume in the sanctuary on the following Sunday. Also, we will have our Vision Sunday on January the 7th at 10.30 a.m. in the sanctuary. We are so excited to share with you what the Lord has placed on our hearts as pastors of this great church as we move into this incredible year. God has given us such um, insight in 2022 that has carried us throughout this entire year. But he has some other things that he wants us to focus in on, on 2023. So make sure that you meet us here in the sanctuary to hear the vision that God has for 2023 at Emmanuel Light of the World. Also, Emmanuel Light of the World Church family, we want you to go ahead and prepare your mind, prepare your heart, prepare your spirit for our 21 day fast and consecration. This is gonna be a time when we are consecrating ourselves before the Lord for 21 days. This will start and begin on January the 9th, amen? And it will go through the 21 day span. So go ahead and prepare yourselves, get your food ready for our 21 days of prayer, consecration, and fasting. Join us for our membership boot camp Saturday, every Saturday in January. We're gonna be breaking down our vision, breaking down the different parts of our vision and what God is really calling us to do in this great church and how you can be a part of it. So we don't want you to miss, this will be a virtual boot camp, membership boot camp that we want everyone who is associated with this church, every member, whether you've been here for 15 years, 20 years, or even just one year, 
one month or even a day. If you've joined the church this past week, we want you to be a part of our membership boot camp. This is, you'll, give, you'll be able to receive the heartbeat of our ministry and how you can get truly plugged in and connected with what the Lord is doing in this next year. What God is doing in this next year, we're gonna need everyone a part. And we want this, the vision of Emmanuel of the world to be embedded into your heart so that we can run with the vision and fulfill all that God has for this mission. Hope to see you there. And these have been your news and events for the month of December. And remember, be the light. Well, it's seat time and offering time here at Emmanuel Light of the World. And as you're gathering and getting your seed prepared um, this morning to be able to give, I just wanna say thank you. I truly wanna say thank you. On behalf of myself and my husband, Pastor Chuck, we both want to say thank you. We wanna say thank you for um, just your generosity throughout this year. We wanna thank you for your consistency in giving throughout this year. We have made it to the end of the year. This is December, 2022, and we've made it to the end of the year. And so we are so grateful for all that you have given, all that you have poured into financially, into this ministry. You know, there's a lot of things that we can see. When we come into a church service, we see the ushers um, greeting people. We see um, the, the pastor preaching. We see, you know, um, children singing. We see all of these things happening in our service. But there are some things that take place each and every week in this church that many people don't get an opportunity to see. You may see what we do from Sunday to Sunday. You may see what we do, you know, from week to week, but there's some people who are serving countless hours through our food pantry, Emmanuel's food pantry every Friday, who's packing boxes, who's serving people food, people who are giving donations, right? Uh, to Operation Snack Pack that we've been doing for several months now. There's people who are working with our children every single Sunday in the back and we don't get to see, but they're depositing, making deposits into our children and they're growing. So there's things that we get to see, but then there's also things that we don't get to see. We don't always get to see the sacrifice that you make from week to week as you consistently give to this ministry. You don't expect an audience, you don't expect a fanfare when you give because it's between you and the Lord. But we want to say, although those things are not expected from, from you or by you, it's appreciated. It's appreciated. Every dollar that you have contributed to this ministry is appreciated. And we want to say thank you for holding up this ministry financially. And we want to say thank you even for the seed that you're about to sow into this house today. I'm telling you, this is good ground. This is a ground that you want to sow into. This is a ground that is blessed. There has been countless of testimonies of God opening up doors and moving in the lives and the families of this ministry. So when you sow today, I want you to know that it is appreciated and I want you to know that it is good ground. Let's give a great seed today. On the day that we get to celebrate Jesus' birthday, let's give a good seed of generosity. I mean, really, God gave his best seed in his son, Jesus, when he sent him here on this earth on Christmas Day. I know it may not be December the 25th, right, the day that Jesus was born, but it's a day that we get to celebrate him. So let's do it in our giving. If you're giving today um, via our website, you can visit our website at elotw.com forward slash give, and you can give in that way, or you can give on our cash app, which is the money symbol, ELOTW5415. If you're writing a check, you can make it payable to Emmanuel, but either way that you choose to give, we are grateful, so grateful for your generosity. Now let's give. Well, good morning, Emmanuel, light of the world, church family. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Myself and Pastor Chuck, we pray that you all are having 
a wonderful, wonderful Christmas morning of spending time with your friends and family um, today. I'm sure many of you guys are probably already opening up presents and um, maybe eating Christmas breakfast. I'm not sure, but um, I'm grateful that you all have taken time out of your Christmas celebration, um, Christmas morning, to spend time with us here at Emmanuel Light of the World for um, just a little Christmas inspirational message that I want to share with you all this morning. I believe that the Lord has a word of encouragement for us. I believe that the, the Lord has a word for us that would bless us this Christmas morning. Amen. And so if you would go ahead and turn with me to the book of Matthew this morning. And as you're turning, I'm just going to open up um, with the word of prayer. Father God, we just thank you for this day, God, that you have allowed us to see. We thank you for this Christmas morning. We are so grateful, Father, for your presence because you are the present. Father, all the things that we have received this morning, God, we are grateful for them, God. But the best gift that we have received is the gift of you. And so, Father, we just slow down our morning and we take time out of our day to be able to hear a word from you and to be able to set our mind and our eyes upon the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for what you shall deposit on the inside of us this morning. And we ask that it would be a blessing to all those who have ears to hear. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. 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 We're going to go to the Christmas store. I mean, we can't have Christmas without reading some parts of the Christmas story because I believe that there's some truths that the Lord wants to highlight in this nativity story. So let's go ahead and start in the book of Matthew chapter one. And I'm going to start with verse 18. If y'all could follow along with me, that would be great. And it says, this is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph, but before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly, so he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Let's go over to Matthew chapter two, verse one. And it says, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from east lands arrived in Jerusalem, asking where is the newborn king of the Jews. We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priest and the teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd of the people of Israel. Then Herod called a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the, when the star was first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for this child. And when you find him, Come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. Verse nine. 
After this interview, the wise men went their way and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was born. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with the mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened up their treasures and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And when it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to hear it. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. You know, typically I don't read that much scripture, but it's Christmas morning, and it's always refreshing to be able to hear the nativity story, to be able to hear the birth of Christ and how everything just unfolded. Amen. And so I just want to speak just for a moment this morning from the title. It's all in how you see him. Can you all just write that in the chat box this morning? It's all in how you see him. Today is Christmas morning, and, and I just want to pose a question to each and every one of us who have tuned in, who have slowed down our morning for just a moment to tune in to this message. I want to ask you a question. How have you seen Jesus this year? How have you seen Jesus this year? You know, oftentimes people can see the same thing. We can all see the same thing, but in different ways and tend to get different results. So how do you see Jesus? How have you seen him this year? How have you seen him today? How do you see him right now on this Christmas morning? Because it's all in how you see him. Amen. You know, so I just want to encourage us this morning to check the lens in which you see Jesus. Check the lens in which you have seen him in every given circumstance in your life. Think about everything that you have journeyed through in this year alone. What lens have you seen Jesus through? Through every situation, through every setback, through every failure, through every disappointment. How have you seen him? Because it's all in how you see him. And I believe that there's a few characters in this nativity story where we can learn a few things, right, on how they saw Jesus on Christmas morning, how they viewed him, which lens they looked at him through. And the first person that I want to highlight in this nativity story is the lens of Herod. Yeah, King Herod. <laughs> I read a little snippet of, of this story, but we all know that as we continue to read in Matthew chapter two, that King Herod goes all about looking for where Jesus was born. And because he didn't know the exact place, because the Magi never returned to him, he went out and he killed all of the, the young boys that were in that age range of the time that Jesus should have been born. So the lens in how Herod saw Jesus in this given moment, in this given time, he saw Jesus as a threat. He saw Jesus as a threat to his kingdom. And he was willing to do whatever he needed to do to take Jesus out because he was a threat. The very thought that this king, this king of the Jews, that this king was being born, this king was born, right? He saw his birth, the birth of a baby, as a threat to his kingdom, as a threat to his throne. And as a result, he decides that he, let's go out and kill him. It disturbed him deeply. It was a threat that Jesus was born. And as I began to think about this, you know, it may seem a bit extreme for many of people who are listening and watching this morning because you're thinking, you know, I would never do that. I would never go to that extreme, that extreme that King Herod went. But for some people, Jesus is a threat to our own kingdom. 
I want you to, to catch this because there has been personal self kingdoms that we have built that involves um, things and how we want it, where we want it, and what we want done in our lives. And we call this the, the kingdom of self. And oftentimes we are okay if we keep Jesus at a distance. We're okay if we keep D Jesus at a social distance um, from us because we're building up our own kingdom in our lives. And there are certain things and certain plans and certain uh, purposes and things that we have set out for our own life. And so we say, I can't let Jesus all the way in. I, I can't really give him my whole life. I'll come to church. I'll pray, you know, when situations get a little tough. You know, I'll even say the church lingo and, and, and jargon. But to really give him my heart, to really give him my life, it will require one thing. It will require me to tear down my own kingdom that I've built in my life. And so sometimes without actually saying it, we can look at relationship and we can look at Jesus as a threat because both kingdoms cannot stand. Either we're representing the kingdom of God or we're representing the kingdom that we've built in and of ourselves. And so my prayer is that if we, any of us are seeing Jesus as a threat to, to what we're doing in our life, I know many people, I don't wanna let God all the way in because I wanna do this and I wanna be this and I wanna go here in my life and I don't necessarily wanna yield my life to him. But my prayer is that as you're hearing this, if you think that, that maybe Jesus in your life, it's almost you've looked at him through the lens of a threat. I want you to tear down the kingdom of self on this Christmas morning and say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done in my life. I tear down the kingdom of self. I tear down the kingdom of self and I give you my life. I give you my heart. I give you everything. I want your will to be done. I want your purpose fulfilled in my life. I want your plans. I want your kingdom to be established in my life. So that's the first lens that we see. We, we, we see the lens of King Herod. Remember, it's all in how you see Jesus this Christmas. And my prayer is that you don't see him as a threat. The next person that I want us to look at is, is that of Joseph. <laughs> and how I would love to go through all of the people in the nativity story, but I think Joseph's story and the lens that he viewed initially viewed Jesus at through was much like many of us. Joseph sees him as an interruption. Joseph has his plans and he has his mindset. Come on, I, I know I'm speaking to someone. He had his mindset on marrying Mary. He had his mind set on the type of life that they would have, maybe however many children that they would have together. He had his plan in place. He had everything was lining up for him. And then suddenly an angel appears to him and interrupts his plan. Have you seen Jesus as an interruption to your plan? Think about the things that maybe you have set up and, and the way that you said that this was going to pan out this year. Oh, maybe God has interrupted your plans even in this year. Maybe there were some things that you were thinking that you would accomplish in this year, but the Lord has turned that plan around to get into alignment with his plan and his purpose. He's interrupted the plan. Maybe you had everything figured out, right? And maybe you didn't expect the transition of your job and the layoff of, of, of your job. Maybe you didn't even expect the, the relationship to end this year. That was no good that the Lord has been saying, get out of it for, for such a long time. Maybe you didn't expect that door, that particular door to close. Maybe you didn't think that flow of income would, would shut off this year. And you've had to, to, to go through some things and it, and it looked like an interruption. But the Lord said, no, it was a part of 
of the plan. It was a part of me aligning you to destiny. So what do you do? We're speaking on Christmas morning. What do you do when God changes the plan? Do you run in the opposite direction or do you just yield? And I love that Mary and Joseph thought it a privilege after initially get, getting and, and seeing what, what the Lord was doing. They, they, they saw it as, as, as one of the best seasons of their life. I remember years ago when I had my mind and my plan set out to attend a certain university. I knew that this was where I wanted to go. This was a place that I definitely wanted to go. I applied, I got accepted. The finances were not all the way there, you know, and my mother applied to a totally different school for me. And things were just not lining up. And God interrupted my plan and I ended up going to Vadasa State University, which was probably the best decision that I had ever made. It literally was a turning point in my relationship with him. It was a turning point in my, in my destiny and what the Lord was doing and wanting to birth out of me. It was really the place in the season of God's interruption in my life that everything changed for me, where I began to grow more and more in love with the Lord where I began to see my purpose and, 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 and plan, the plan of God in my life begin to unfold. So an interruption from God is not, it's not always, it's, it's uncomfortable at times. It can even be a little confusing. When the Lord uh, redirects or, or, or turns some things around, closes some door, opens up some other doors, but just to get you right into alignment with where he wanted you to be all alone. And so it's okay to, to see Jesus as an interruption as long as you yield to what he's doing, as long as you yield to the plan of God in your life. Amen. And many of us can attest to that, that this year has been a year of yielding, that I didn't know how God was going to work this thing out and I didn't know how he was going to move in, in, in the midst of, of the storm. I didn't know how he was going to turn this thing around. But, but, but even through the interruption, I still trusted God and I saw it as his hands moving in my life. Somebody just shout out, it's all in how you see him. The third person that I want us to, to, to lean in on and begin to see through their lens is the lens of the shepherds. We know that the shepherds were out in the field when Jesus was born. They were out in the field, they were tending the sheep. But the shepherds saw Jesus as an expectation. They saw Jesus as an expectation. They were tending the sheep, they were working the field, but they had an expectation in their heart that Jesus would soon come, amen? And I just hear this in my spirit that you're waiting on the Lord to just begin to reveal himself in a certain situation in your life. You're waiting on him to move in such a way where you know that this is God. But I'm here to tell you that if we see through the lens of the shepherd, then we would always see and view whatever circumstances we are in we will always stand with expectation, expecting God to move in the way that he needs to move in any given circumstance. It doesn't matter what the doctors say. It doesn't matter the symptoms that you're feeling right now in your body. It doesn't matter what it looks like, what your bank account looks like. It doesn't matter what you're facing and what you're going through. But when you are able to see God and to see Jesus through the lens of expectation, that I'm not gonna allow my faith to move, I'm not gonna allow my faith to shift in this season because I expect God. Can somebody just type that this Christmas morning? I expect God. I know we only have a few more days in this year, but I expect God, I expect God.
Amen. The shepherds, they, they, they expected, they believed the prophecies that, 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 that were given years before in the scripture. They, when the angels appeared to them, they received it. They believed it so much so that they ran and told everybody about what the angel had spoken unto them. There's just somebody here today that you need to go ahead and run and tell, amen, somebody about what God is about to do. See, oftentimes we tell folks and we tell tell people about what God has done and you need to keep doing that. But I'm about to open up my mouth and tell folks about what God is about to do. Why? Because I expect God. Amen. I'm going to keep tending my sheep. I'm going to continue to work the field that God has me in and expect God. No matter how things are looking, no matter how things are panning out, I expect God. I'm looking through the lens this Christmas morning with expectation because God can be trusted. Say hallelujah. Amen. I expect God to work it out. I expect God to heal. I expect God to set me free. I expect God to deliver me. I expect God to provide whatever it is that you're expecting God to do. Amen. I'm going to stand with you and believe that he will. Amen. And so maybe this morning you're, you're, you're looking through the lens of expectation. That's a good lens to look through this Christmas morning. Amen. Expectation. The next one I want us to look through the lens of is, is the lens of the wise men. Amen. They saw the star and wanted to worship him. They, they were willing to, to, to go wherever they needed to go to be where Jesus was. Do I have anybody like that this year? That's saying, listen, I, I'm going to go wherever I need to go. I'm going to be wherever I need to be to stay in the center of the will of God. To make sure that the presence of the Lord is, is flowing in my life. So the wise men saw Jesus as king. And many of us, I believe, sees him as, as king because he is king. Scripture says that he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of of Lord's. They had so much uh, uh, knowing and knowledge and belief and trust that this baby that was born on this Christmas morning was the king that they had been awaiting for. So much so that they traveled until the star stopped where the child was laying. They believed so much that they carried gifts with them to present to the king. This is how I knew that that they knew that that who they were going to worship was definitely the king that they expected him to be. Scripture says that they brought three gifts. They bought the gifts of gold, which represents his kingship. So they presented gold at the feet of this baby. Who many people could look at this baby and, and during that same time and not recognize his kingship, but they saw him through the lens of the king. And my prayer is that on this Christmas morning that you are seeing Jesus. You're seeing and you're celebrating on this day, the king. They brought frankincense and that represents his divinity. That yes, he is God, right? Jesus, Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Amen. They 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 looked at this baby. And they saw him as king. They also brought the gift of myrrh. And this was an anointing. So not only did they see him as king and they saw his divinity, right, that he was not just a baby, but he was also God. You know, so he saw they saw his divinity, but then they also brought the myrrh to represent the anointing at his death. So they knew what he came to do. He was he came to die for our sins. And so all three gifts represented his kingship, represented what he came and what he was purposed to do. Amen. And they worshiped him. See, what I realized something about. Seeing through the lens of, of kingship. Is that sometimes we don't always see through the lens of the king. Sometimes we can look at look at Jesus or look at God and and say this is a, a distant God and, and, and he does things and, he, you know, he he um, um, 
kind of operates in a certain way, right? But we don't represent and we don't actually acknowledge and see that, that he, is, he is king. Because when we have that understanding that he is king, then we also understand our identity as children of the king, which makes us citizens of his kingdom, which makes us children of the king. So we have to understand that we are sons and daughters. When we have an understanding, we look through the lens that he is king. Then we also know we also bring identity to who we are. See, the enemy has been telling us all year of who we aren't because he doesn't want us to get a grasp on our identity in Christ as a true son and daughter and all of the privileges and all of the rights that you have access to, that you have had access to all year long that many of us have not tapped into because we've lost sight of the king. We've lost sight of our status as sons and daughters of the king. Amen. But it's all in how you see him. I want, I, if you don't get anything else this Christmas morning, I want you to leave with this saying it's all in how you see him. See, the enemy would love for us not to operate in authority. Why? Because we, you know, he wants his king, his kingdom to continue to reign in our lives. He doesn't want us to recognize the, the power and the authority and the rights and the privileges that we have as sons and daughters of God. But you see, it's all in how we see him. Amen. But the real lens that I want us to end with this morning, this is the real lens that I want us to begin to look through right now in this moment. Because maybe we have been so caught up on the pomp and circumstance of Christmas, on the gift giving and the spending and the shopping. And we're probably so worn out. We're just glad that Christmas we've gotten through or gotten started with Christmas and all the activities that you have planned for today. But I want us to, to, to take this in and look through one particular lens this morning. Are y'all ready for it? Because this is a lens that Simeon viewed Jesus through. And I believe it's a lens that we need to view him through. Not just Christmas morning, but every moment of our waking life. And I want us to turn to Luke chapter 2. And I want us to see the lens that Simeon views Jesus through. Let's turn here. Luke chapter two. And we're going to look at verses 25 through 30. And it says at the time, at that time, there was a man in Jerusalem named Simeon. He was righteous and devout and was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit was upon him and had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord, as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen, watch this, your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. See, the lens that Simeon viewed Jesus was the lens that all of us need to take on right now or even just be reminded of in this moment on this Christmas morning. When he viewed Jesus, he saw his salvation. Amen. He saw his salvation. See, there's two, you know, at the least two um, prominent holidays that we that we celebrate and we go all out in the church. One being Easter. And we know Easter, we celebrate 
the finished work of Christ. We celebrate what Jesus came to do, what he accomplished on earth, right? Him dying on the cross for our sins, buried, resurrected. On Easter, we are celebrating the resurrection of the Lord. It is done. It is finished. There's victory. But on Christmas, we represent and we celebrate the coming of salvation. And let me just tell you, it is something to scream about. It is something to rejoice about. It is something to say, hallelujah, praise God. We are celebrating today. This Christmas morning is it, the gifts are great, but we are celebrating because we're looking through the lens of that Simeon looked through and we are seeing our salvation. We are seeing our salvation. Amen. We are seeing the coming of the Messiah. We are thankful that he came and we are celebrating the birth of Christ, that he came in. The light has come into this dark world. We are celebrating our hope, the hope of glory. We are celebrating our salvation. Our savior has come. We no longer have to stay in this place of darkness for God has sent his son, his son through a virgin named Mary, and he went through a lot, let me just tell you, to get here. But on Christmas morning, our, our lens says, we are grateful and we see that this is truly about Jesus. This is truly about salvation. Is anybody glad about it? I mean, when you just begin to think back on your life before Christ. Maybe you, you, you're here and you said, I haven't accepted Christ in my life before, and I'm gonna give you an opportunity to do that. But for those who have accepted Jesus and you know what your life used to look like, you know what you were entangled in, you know the darkness that you were in, but that was in camp round about you. When you begin to celebrate Christmas morning and you celebrate the coming of salvation, something in your spirit should begin to leap with joy that Jesus Jesus came to earth. Oh my God, this is what Christmas is about. That the Savior has come to begin his work. Amen. If he had not come, the work would not be done. So we're grateful for his coming. Amen. See, you can see Jesus in many different ways. You can see him as the threat. You can see him as the expectation. You can see him as 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 the king. You can see him, you know, as as um, as the interruption, whatever it is, you can see him in many different ways. But this Christmas. Choose to see him. As your salvation. Amen the day that we get to celebrate the birth of Christ in this day over 2000 years ago when he entered the world. Salvation has come. Just tell somebody in your family, it's all in how you see him. It's all in how you see Jesus. But people at Emmanuel, we're seeing him as savior this morning. Amen. And maybe you've lost sight during this Christmas holiday. I know I've been really busy. It's my birthday today. I was born on Christmas and sometimes, you know, you can think it's about you, but I try to keep my focus on, on Jesus. Amen. And so I just wanted us to just slow down this Christmas morning and just put our eyes, fix our lens on Jesus, our salvation, amen? Maybe you're here and you're listening and you're watching this morning and you're saying, you know, I think I've seen Jesus as a threat to my life, not really wanting him to come all the way in, not really giving him a chance to do and transform my life like I know it needs to be transformed. 
But today after hearing this message, I believe that I can switch the lens and begin to see him as savior. And not just see him that way, but give him my whole heart, give him my life. I mean, you know, what better gift? I mean, the, the wise men brought three gifts as they came to his birthday. They brought the, the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh. But what is the gift that you can give this Christmas morning? I'll tell you, you can give him, humbly give him your life, give him your trust, your faith, give him your heart. And it's as simple as saying, Jesus, I'm tired of living life apart from you. I'm tired of building up my own kingdom, the kingdom of self. And I tear down the kingdom of self. And I want you to build up my life in you. Ask the Lord to forgive you of every sin that you've committed. Repent of them now. And believe in your heart today that Jesus came to this earth for the mere purpose of dying on the cross for your sins, being buried and resurrected on the third day that you might have life with him eternally. Scripture says if you believe that in your heart, confess that out of your mouth, confess it out of your life that Jesus Christ is Lord then you shall be saved he says the old you has passed away this is your birthday if you're saying this prayer from your heart this is your birthday and I believe that the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now and I also believe the Holy Spirit is coming to make his residence in your heart to transform your life so that you won't look like the same person this time next year. Continue to put your trust and your faith in him and don't change your lens. Continue to see him as king. Continue to see him as savior and your salvation. My prayer is that you were blessed by this inspirational Christmas message this morning. And if you've just shifted your lens, then this word has done its part. You all have a blessed rest of your Christmas and have a blessed time with your family. And we'll see you all next time. You all be blessed. Bye-bye.